First are a very special thing. Your first steps, first words, first time at school, first love. These moments have special places in everyone's hearts as another first will never come. Firsts often change your perspective of life and leave a lasting impact on you forever. My first love didn't go well, so now I sit alone and watch anime. Speaking of anime and firsts, I would like to talk about my first ever shitty anime, which also happened to be my first anime I watched independently. So today, I know Okoa will be talking about Osamake, my first harem anime, and will be asking the question, is Osamake a good anime? My first animes were the same as most people's, Doraemon, Pokemon, Dragon Ball, Yokai Watch, and so on. I watched them with my little sister and just had a good time with them. However, when I turned 13, I got a Crunchyroll subscription and was just browsing some anime, and you know how 13 year olds are. Horny. So I looked for harems, romances, and some other down bad shows. I was looking for exactly two things, hot anime girls and an art style that I was fine with. Speaking of which, after this show, my second anime was My First Girlfriend is a Gal. Yeah, I was really down bad, but let me know if I should do a video on it. But I searched until I found Osamake. I remember liking it at the time because I was only looking for the two things. But now that I'm a bit more mature, I look for more things in anime. Osamake. Rom-com where the childhood friend won't lose follows our main character, Maru, a former child prodigy actor who just had his heart broken for the first time by Kachi, a teenage writing prodigy who is very pretty and sexy. Maru's childhood friend, Kuroha, has a crush on Maru, but Maru rejects her. She proposes that they get revenge on Kachi by pretend dating to make her jealous. Yeah, I don't see how that would do anything when she doesn't like him. But actually, Kachi does like Maru because as a child she met him and they promised that Kachi would write a story that Maru would act in later on in life. There's exactly one other char- Is that fuckboy Ayana Koji? Yeah, he's an asshole, but so is the rest of the cast. Who in their right mind thinks to get revenge for another girl just not liking them? This is some true incel shit. Kachi, the girl he's crushing on, is also shown as an insufferable asshole in the beginning. Think of Horikita from Classroom of the Elite, or how Kageyama from Haikyuu originally was. Now you know exactly what Kachi is like. An annoying, self-absorbed, I don't need any friends character. And she is somehow the best girl by technicality. Because Kuroha is seemingly a bubbly Genki girl, but is actually a sick ball of lolly. There's something wrong with the way she sees things. She was the one who coaxed Maru into this whole revenge thing which was just insane. We then have fuckboy Ayana Koji, who is an asshole. But for him, that is at least his bit. Everyone knows that he isn't a good person. The show introduced us to him by telling us he was three-timing a girl. Last, and certainly least, we have Maru. Yup, let's move on. Seriously, that dude has no personality. Let's do a little pop quiz. Guess which character I am talking about. Asshole, wimpy, horny, the girls like him because of the genre. Am I talking about A, Kazuya from Rent-A-Girlfriend, B, Maru from Osamake, C, Futaro from Quintessential Quintuplet, or D, Nagi from A Couple of Cuckoos? The answer was E, all of them. They all have no characteristics that distinguish them from one another, but that's a trope, don't blame me. Also, his ahoge really pisses me off for some reason. The thing that initially stood out to me was the horrible dialogue. I don't like to use this word to describe things as it isn't a concrete term, but I can only describe it as cringy. Their conversations all seem like they're generated by Snapchat AI and even the exposition dumps feel unnatural and random. They literally just say things. Look at how they introduce Kachi. And the bit where the characters randomly say guilty was funny the first time because it was so bad, but it was boring, cringeworthy, and annoying by the second time they did it. Also, thinking about it, what the hell does guilty even mean in that situation? He's guilty, you're guilty, she's guilty, am I guilty for watching this shitty show? The low quality dialogue combined with asshole characters just makes the antagonist seem cartoonishly antagonistic and for no reason at that. The main antagonist for the first arc was this dude. 
He's a fellow actor who hates Maru for some reason and wants to take the girl he likes away from him. So they start dating. Maru declares a battle against him with his acting skills but he hasn't acted in years. What do you do? He practices and faints for no reason. Maybe he's just acted so well that he actually fainted from nervousness. Speaking of acting well, that is how his mom died and also why he quit acting. His mom was an aspiring actress but failed. So her son, Maru, was her biggest pride and joy. When he got a big part in a drama, she got to play the role of his mom. In her death scene, she was supposed to get hit by a car, but she doesn't get hit by the car. She acted so well in her death scene that she actually died. This might seem too stupid to be true and it almost seems like an exaggeration or bit of some sort from my part, but no, that is seriously what happened. Then we find out that Kachi was actually a childhood friend of Maru's that had a crush on him all these years while he forgot about her. Now the name of the show means absolutely nothing too. After the two talk things out and get a little closer, Kuroha overhears and basically ends her little thing with Maru. They don't do the acting battle and it never gets mentioned again. But a featured dance or something happens at the school, ask your crush out in public event. That whole thing is sponsored by the school by the way, which I don't know the morality of, but that is besides the main selling point of that arc. The arc comes with the worst, cringiest dance confessions I have ever seen. Why don't you take a gander at this? It genuinely pains me that this went through several levels of production. Someone saw the original material, pitched the idea, choreographed it, animated it, and then had several people review it, and then published it. That is just wild to me. Then he proceeds to not actually ask Kashi out and instead ask Kuroha out. She rejects him as revenge for when he rejected her before. This takes a petty protagonist thing to the furthest extremes. Every single character seems like a version of Kazuya from Rent a Girlfriend. We also find out that Dickhead McDickface from earlier wasn't actually the bad guy. Maru gets a lot of attention from this on WeTube and we get introduced to Momo. How would I describe her? Ah, uh, yes. Lolly Emoto Bimbo. You get her whole character now. As you can guess, she also has a crush on Maru. Speaking of Emotos, Kuroha has three of them who all seem to have a crush on Maru, but I can't quite confirm this yet. Anyways, now an agency is looking for Maru to return from his hiatus and join them. And then some things happen, and by that I mean absolutely nothing happens, and they are now doing a commercial battle between the agency and Maru and his goons. And they just gotta skip over the whole thing and just show us the final product and them winning. The final product was... something else. That was a commercial for an energy drink by the way. Oh yeah, they also introduced Rena to us. And I have to say, I kinda like her. She is just a bro and is chill as hell, but sadly has little part in the actual story. She kinda reminds me of Uzaki, but a tad bit more mellowed down and chill. She just kinda lingers in the background while the main plot happens and that is probably for the best. I'm afraid that if they showed us more of her, they would somehow ruin her. Because even when she is on screen, Mara just oddly sexualizes her a lot. <laughs> Luckily, she just makes fun of him and shit talks him for it. Again, what a G. And in the midst of all this, Kuroha pretends to have amnesia because I actually don't know why she even did that even after the explanation, but basically it was because she wanted to help Maru. I don't know how that can help him, but it's a sentiment that matters. By this time, it started to be 100%, without a doubt, concrete clear to me that Maru has nothing going for him. He's stupid, clumsy, perverted, an asshole, not one good trait from him. Yes, I knew most of this before, but it has been taken to a whole new level. And I can't see where the show wants to go from here. 
Kachi always wavered from bitch to not a bitch, Kuroha was always a bitch but wasn't shown as one, and random characters are being added. I genuinely think that this whole story was ad-libbed by a couple of dudes in a garage just messing around. Hey, dude, what if we made, like, an anime, but we made everyone an absolute asshead? Yo, dude, that would be rad. One of the girls would have to be a psychopath, right? Yeah, dude, that's sick. And, and, what if we added this little girl who looked like a child and made her hot? Ew, that would be righteous. Oh, oh, how about a big to the side character who just shit talks a main character? What's the story gonna be about? Um, I don't know, just think of anything. Okay, um, actors, boobs, um, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Perfect, dude. Perfect. I say this because they go to the beach next, for no real reason. Well, they ad-lib a reason in saying that they will film a dance music video there. Around this time, we also find out that there is more to Ayana Koji than there seems to be. He has some family issues, but it really doesn't matter so I'll leave it at this. Apparently, Rena, the current best girl, is Ayana Koji's half-sister or something. And I can already see that they are trying to do things with her and will ruin her eventually. As you might have noticed in this video essay specifically, I go back a lot. There are more times than usual where I backtrack on something I said and explain something else. That isn't because I can't keep track of my writing by the way, it's because the show is actually paced like this. They just go back and forth between bits of absolute nothing and they just make really random decisions with the characters. Like, Ayana Koji is suddenly really violent to Maru, which I'm not complaining about cause fuck Maru, but it really is just out of nowhere. At this point, I don't know if they want to pursue the Maru x Kuroha route or the Maru x Kachi route, but that poses a huge problem. Because the show isn't really sure on what to do, it seems hesitant, and as a result, the characters are also indecisive hesitant assholes. And of course, when it seemed like Maru and Kachi might be a thing. The trope I hate the absolute most happens. The fucking phone call. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Bad trope for bad show, I guess. Them doing this trope made another thing very clear to me. This show is not going anywhere for a very long time. They are going to continue this will they won't they for a long time before ultimately choosing one of the girls at a point where I no longer care. With the title of the show and the plot itself, I think they were trying to do a meta parody of the genre, but they fail hard at that. It instead turns into another one of the thing they are trying to parody. And as if the absolute shit show plot wasn't enough, they somehow make it worse. You remember Kuroha's side character sisters from before? Yeah, they just confirmed that at least one of them likes Maru, and I just have to ask, why? Everyone knows that they aren't gonna end up with him. Hell, we can even already kinda tell that Momo won't end up with him. But they just keep adding random bullshit hoping that something will stick. But it doesn't. What does kinda stick though is this dance video that they actually filmed which was a special credit scene for episode 9. The music was cool, and the actual dance didn't hurt to watch. Hey. Props to them, that was good. Which begs the question, why the hell would they opt for the dance that Maru did when they have the ability to do something like this? They use even more tropes and Maru's arm breaks at the end of the beach trip and Kachi will now stay over at his house to take care of him. This whole B-plot doesn't really do much. They just jump straight into the next arc. This arc is about the crew making a documentary about Maru's life. It goes into his life and his mother's passing and is supposed to be emotional and stuff, but I didn't really care. And cut. We end the show there. See what I did there? Like how the show was about actors and- Okay, never mind. But the show ends with him being closest to Kuroha. How it happened? You know as much as I do. And you know I have to ask the question. Who is best girl? The obvious answer will be Rena or the maid we see for a couple scenes, but I just don't think you would be satisfied with some rando side character getting that title. So out of the main girls, who is best girl? The bitch, psychopath, or the Emoto? And I really don't want to say this, but it's the Emoto. She at the least 
bad going for her and seemed genuine at times. When she did have the bad asshole traits come out, it seemed self-aware for the most part. So congratulations, I guess, to Momo for winning the title of Best Girl in Osamake. So to answer the question you all came here for, is Osamake a good anime? Fuck no! Did you watch the video? But yeah, this anime was truly one of the worst I've ever seen. The reason why it took me so long to make this was genuinely because I could not bring myself to watch it. Luckily, I found a way to change the playback speed on Crunchyroll, which I did with a Google extension called Crunchyroll HTML5. Super useful by the way, so give it a try. This was a true bona fide shit show, And this was the anime to bring me into anime. Maybe that's why I only watch garbage now. Anyways, fuck you, fuck the show, fuck me. My name is Noah Boakoa, and thanks for watching. <sighs> Never want to watch that garbage again.